This is not a let's play. I'm just selecting let's play. I got two things to show you. One, a thousand and one games and more from ValueSoft. I grabbed this ISO off the internet archive. You can too. Second, Quick and Easy CAD utility program for Windows. I've never heard of this company or this program, so this might be great. It might be fucking awful. Let's see what we got. I had to put my machine on the floor because the fan was too loud. My microphone kept picking it up. So. I think that's NetBSD. Alright, uh... I don't know if this thing will work in a vertical orientation. We're gonna find out. Alright. Alright, here we are, back on the stage history. So, this thing seems to have a Windows installer, and what I'm guessing is that this thing just installs DOS apps, and you have to go to DOS and run them anyway. Uh, I want to point out that this icon right here comes with Visual Basic, so I can tell you right off the bat, this program was made by some people that had a budget of a dollar. Oh yeah, you see that stark white background? That's the sign of a quality app. Okay, C1001, smash that button. Okay, set up complete. Okay, so again, that icon right there came with Visual Basic. I mean, it probably came with Visual Studio, to be frank. The point is, they didn't even, oh. Oh, okay. This program is really bad. So, as you can see, this is just like a hard file listing. Like, I kind of have a feeling, I think this might be listing physical files on the disk. Yeah, I think we'll find that these folders map directly to sections in this list here. So if we just pop into DOS games here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they've just got some little database file that's storing all this information. So this is truly awful. Uh, this is about normal for shareware games disks back in the day. This was pretty much how it looked. Uh, this is this is what I'm used to. Uh, we do have um, too many geckos. Exquisite graphics and an incredibly realistic fully texture map 3D environment. Now this could be good. Yeah, it's actually a lie. It won't be good. Oh. Okay. Uh, installation complete. So it made this folder in the start menu and put nothing in it. So that's that's super classy. You know, it set it says to press help to see about setting up the title. So I'm going to hit help. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, this is the entertainment pack for OS2, which is not specified on the CD anywhere. But this has got OS2 software, probably because they just mirrored some FTP. And we do have Scunny. Um, hopefully this runs well. Scunny is a very bad platformer. We have a pool shark game, and pool, pool games were thick on the ground in the DOS era. There were so many pool games. I don't know why. There weren't so many darts games. There weren't really any sports games to speak of that I really saw, but pool games held a breakfast. Another empty program group. How many do we have at this one? Oh, no, there we go. Whoa. All right. Let's, let's run one of these. Okay, so there you go. So the escape gets out of that. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. We also have Mac Demo, Mac Disk. Here, uh, I'm curious. What's Mac? All right, good. All right, I'm just going to maximize this. And, uh... There you go. All right. I don't know if you can read all that. So, Macroware Software is the creation of the immortal Macro Man. If you do not believe that I, Macro Man, am immortal, all I can say is for you to try and prove otherwise. Macroware Software is basically based on the distribution concept that some idiot will... Well, the, 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 the Ayn Rand voice. Oh, Jesus. There's more of it. All right. God! Fuck! Still! Okay, finally, we're free. Back again. Uh, three hundred. Okay, all right. This is a Safari software game, and Safari actually made some good stuff. So there could be some quality in here. The fact it's included on this particular CD compilation sort of lends some uh, doubt to that. Okay. Uh, Scrabble, Pinochle. These games uh, did CDs were always just absolutely slammed to the gills with garbage, just filler. Um, absolute garbage. I was hoping to find was uh, was trolls. They don't seem to have trolls. Fairly good graphics, but good story. I've never seen but used as a double negative, but hey, it's first time for everything, eh? All right, we've got a pretty good chunk of games on here, so let's go ahead and bounce into DOS. So I'm gonna show everything down here. All right. 
Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to do it. This machine has a CPI. We're going to begin with Scunny because I remember Scunny. Scunny was terrible. Installation successful. Let's type setup to configure the game. Okay. Uh, sound controller. Uh, I've got a. Wow. This is interesting. Pro Audio Studio 16. Never heard of that one. Logitech Soundman Wave. Never heard of that one. Audio Tricks Pro. Never heard of that one. Roland Rap 10. Never heard of that one. ISP 16. Nope. ESS 688. Nope. Monterey I had heard of. I used to have one of those. Let's start the game. Now this is intriguing. Apparently this has a custom game engine with a built-in editor. Okay. World Manager. Oh wow. Wow. This is not the game I remember. That's fine though. So I'm not going to get into all that yet. Let's just, uh, let's take a look at the game. Let's play. This is not a let's play. I'm just selecting let's play. Okay. Whoa. Wow. This is directly ripped off from Donkey Kong Country. This one is very obviously a Donkey Kong Country knockoff to the extent that it even has the same lizard guys. But it's it's very awkward to play. It's it's hard to explain. The the motion doesn't really ease. Uh, instead of things slowing down as they approach the terminus of their travel, uh, instead uh, everything just sort of stops harshly when it gets to places. And that includes the camera, which means that everything about this game is very jerky and harsh, and you're not really sure where you are at any moment. Like for instance. Scunny here seems to be flying up and hitting something up above, but we can't actually see that thing, so we don't know what it is that he's hitting. And if I press left or right, it jerks the camera violently left or right. You see that treasure chest there? It's moving uh, separately from the extreme background and from the foreground and from Scunny. That's a parallax effect, which is all well and good, except it's not really a very good one. When you move around like this, I don't know if you're, you're getting this in the stream, but it's sort of awkward. The treasure chest feels like it's really, really close. Much closer than it should be. Obviously, this is a Sonic knockoff. This is somebody trying to make Sonic the Hedgehog. And this was pretty common back in the day, to make games that were very clearly Mario Brothers or very clearly Sonic or very clearly Tetris or whatever. Uh, one of my favorite games was Jazz Jackrabbit, and that was, in no uncertain terms, what if Sonic had a gun? It feels like a beta, you know, it, it feels like a, uh, it feels like a Ludum Dare game almost, you know, and the text that appears on the screen, like, it just reeks of demo scene, it feels like a demo scene game, and indeed, like, the people who made this may have come from the demo scene. Oh, well, I died. Now, again, you see that? You know, when something died, when your character died on the on the Genesis or on the SNES in virtually any game, they would have had a smooth up and down progression as, as they died. But in this one, you bounce up and then you hang there and then you just suddenly start traveling down. It feels very unnatural. So, in other words, this is not a very well-made game. But what's strange about it is there's really no reason for that. The PC was capable of better graphics and better performance than any of the competing consoles. And a few games such as Jazz Jackrabbit demonstrated that by having basically exactly the same experience that you had on those other consoles. So certainly it was capable of doing it better. It just seems like there was less concern. I mean, the developers that were working on the SNES and the Genesis at the time, they had to put in effort to implement these things, but the PC developers just didn't. They just didn't bother. They just, they acted like market dumpers. They acted like people who are making a product they know full well is not very good, and they just want to get something that looks like sales in order to convince some investors that they should spend money, or they want to get something that looks like sales so that they can get 
a publishing company had picked them up or whatever. And it seems like a lot of them never actually ended up making a real game. You know, that's what it feels like, is that a lot of this stuff was just sort of contractual obligations, almost. Like, they made something that was technically a game. I mean, you can't you can't prove that it isn't, but it doesn't feel very fun. Yeah, this game's bad. You know? It's a bad game. Let's take a look at that map editor, if we can get to it. Oh, there we go. Tutorial world. What does the map editor look like? Okay, here we are. All right, we do have a mouse. The frame rate's way too high. Wow. Ah. Now, see, here's what's interesting about this. This editor actually seems quite competent. It feels better than the game does. Now I can duplicate by just right-clicking. That's pretty cool. Now yeah, let's just slam some coins together there. Yeah, no, that's just great. Look at that. You can see when you roll over other things or get close to other things, it shows you where their outline is. That's a great feature. Uh, there's a layer system. Okay. There's an option to hide other layers so we don't get confused. That's a fantastic option. There we are. Oh, whoa. Whoa. And there's us playing the level we just made. So, Yeah, uh, this game seems almost more like a tech demo than really a, a complete game. Yeah, wow, look at that. So that uh, so that flipped the image, which is very hard to do on a console with dedicated video hardware. But it's really easy to do on a PC, which has VGA, where you're just addressing a bitmap. So that's pretty much just them showing off the fact they're operating on PC hardware. Now, likewise, everything about this is sort of showing off they're operating on PC hardware. You know, they're... Ex they're exceeding what would have been contemporary parallax image limits. They're exceeding probably sprite limits. But very obviously, this is Sonic the Hedgehog. They're trying to make Sonic the Hedgehog. And they didn't do a very good job of it. And this game was completely forgotten, and for good reason. All right, here we are. We got a game. Seek. Smash. All right. Uh, no, I'm good. Save and exit. All right, we're about the game. Safari Software. Seek and Destroy. That's a helicopter game. Uh, those are some brief credits. Alright, so let's just take a peek at the uh, options here. Alright, so obviously we want that to be high. We want that to be low because I'm bad at games. Uh, it seems the controller is primarily the mouse. Now, this was an era of beautiful graphics, and I want to point that out real quick. One thing I'll say about this, as much as I'll rag on a lot of PC games, is that a lot of PC games had really gorgeous video. The The pixel art that they used for the menu interface and that sort of thing, the icons, the mouse cursor, etc., was all 256 colors. It was absolutely gorgeous. If you look at the mouse cursor here, the mouse cursor is in itself a work of art. It doesn't look like any other mouse cursor you've ever seen. There was so much flexibility and just basic UI elements at the time that they they just went completely hog wild. They did whatever they wanted. And the result was that every user interface and any piece of software that came out after about 1992 that the developers really care about, the user interface usually looked beautiful. Okay. So this is a mouse-based game, I'm told. Whoa. No, I was not anticipating that. So I'm, I'm flying this with the mouse. Um, I'm going to go ahead and impose some mouse footage there so you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So it's sort of a... You see in the lower, sort of half lower left corner there, there's a little box with a green, green pip moved around in it. What I'm doing is I'm moving basically a virtual joystick. Now this game doesn't have joystick support, and that's very strange for the era. That's super unusual that it wouldn't have joystick support. Never seen that before. Every game had joystick support. So the mouse is essentially serving as a relative input to a joystick, and that's a very odd choice. But I guess maybe they tried it with joystick and found it didn't really work all that well. So the other thing I want to point out is that this is really smooth. Uh, I don't know if it's showing up in the captured video, but 
this is running at the full 60 FPS or 70 FPS that this, this uh, video resolution is running in. It's extremely smooth. However, the buildings and plants, they're rotating at something less than the same speed as the Hella Chopper. So this Hella Pad that I'm right over, as I rotate, it updates continuously. The, the lines, the actual, uh, the little, right above the nose of my chopper, you can see there's a tan line there. If I back up, you'll see there's a brown line in front of the nose of my chopper right now. Those are vector graphics pretty clearly because when I turn around, those update very smoothly. Everything else updates slowly. So the circle around the uh, helipad landing icon, uh, that's actually not rotating at all. That's staying locked to the screen. I guess they're like, ah, well, this is round. We don't need to rotate it. Well, it actually really stands out. And then all the buildings and car and all the other miscellaneous stuff on the ground and the big H, those are only rotating to maybe 16, maybe 32 different positions, but they're not rotating with every single degree that I turn. So either they buffered all of those, pre-rendered all of them, or they're doing updates only once in a while to save on per-frame computational power. Either way, it doesn't look great but I guess it does look better than what the SNES had. All right, my radar says I'm coming up on some things here. Oh, okay, all right. Whoa, whoa! Okay, blow that guy up. That guy up. Oh, wow. I'm gonna say that despite the fact that this game is cheesy in a couple of ways already. It's actually already fairly dynamic. I'm, I'm pretty impressed by it. So we've got sort of a choplifter style thing going on where you've got to land and pick up dudes. I'd say that for a mouse controlled helicopter game that was pretty fun. Yeah, okay. So Safari also did, I believe, I think they did the game Traffic Department 2192, which is actually one of my favorite games ever. Um, although the gameplay itself isn't that impressive, it is still a pretty good game, if you ask me, just because of the narrative. I'd say that all things considered, Safari has done a pretty bang-up job with this game. It seems like a pretty basic arcade game, but it's definitely one I haven't played before, so I gotta give them props for that. Uh, let's look at, uh, Shark P. Woof! That's a lot of files. Now, usually if you see a lot of files, generally that means you're about to play a 3D game. Alright, so I typed go, and all I got was some propaganda for the company that made it. So I'm not sure what that was about. Let's try pool.exe. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. Wow, this looks bad. Um, I'm not sure what graphics mode this is. I... I feel like this must be VGA with the number of interesting colors I see here, but maybe it's some sort of reprogrammed EGA or, or, or even CGA. Either way, it looks very bad, but it's actually pretty high resolution. That mouse cursor has a lot of pixels from end to end. You can play as Freud uh, or as a number of caricatures. Huh. All right. Steady Eddie. Well, I'm going to go with Sharp Sean. And we'll right click. Oh. I only get to play the white guy. God damn it. Okay. Demo always different. Now, yeah, so this is a fairly high resolution game. It's supposed to be running in one of the higher res, maybe EGA modes. I feel like this might be EGA. But what this might also be is something even worse. This might be text mode that's rapidly updating character cell graphics. I don't really have the assembly skills to find out, so I'm not gonna, but all the same, I, I feel like there's... Oh, yeah. You see these here? This is basically the terminal text colors, and these are the size of terminal characters. So I have the pretty strong feeling that what we're looking at here is a game that was built by very rapidly, at you know, very high frequency, updating the character cell graphics on, on the graphics card. All right, well, here we are on the stage of history, so uh, let's see how this works. Well, now that's neat. That's a pretty cool graphical trick. 
However he's doing that, that's a pretty cool graphical trick. It makes me doubt that this really is character cell graphics, but I want to point something out. Do you notice how when I move this over the ball, the black ball, do you see those green borders? That's very curious. That makes me think that he's dealing with limited palette colors. And that makes me think that this is some sort of fake mode. Some kind of graphics mode that's not supposed to exist. Either way, uh, I'm not sure how this works. I don't know whether this means I'm going to shoot this way real hard, or this means that's where the pool cue is. So I'm going to try this. Okay, it looks like that was supposed to be a pool cue. Whoa. Alright, well, Steady Eddie hit the hole, so good for him. Aaron, you just missed that one. I don't know who Aaron is. I guess that's me. All of a sudden, the game is uh, taunting and insulting me, and I don't know why. So it offers custom gift ideas. Let's see what that is. Here is a great gift idea that will surprise and delight the recipient. A pool shark package that has been personally customized by you. While Pearl Shark plays, it makes comments on the game action. Now you supply the comments, and we will incorporate them into the game to add to Pool Shark's conversational repertoire. You know, I gotta wonder. I really do wonder if anyone took him up on this. So once again, our second exhibit for this show is Quick and Easy Cat. But we're not going to do that right now. I'm saving that for a second segment because this video is already 20 minutes long and I don't want to make these so long that nobody wants to watch them. Keep your eye out for the next upload, which will be just the CAD section of this video, where I'm going to go through and try to use this CAD software to design an actual piece of furniture I'm going to build. Thanks for watching, and I hope we'll see you soon in the second segment.